Good morning, I'm Pastor Jan Funk, and this is our worship service for Sunday, May 24th. Happy Memorial Day to all of you. I hope you have an opportunity to celebrate this three-day weekend. I have a few announcements for us. First of all, on May 31st, Sunday, next week from one to three, we will be collecting non-perishable food items for Wellspring Social Service Agency. We will meet in our parking lot and you won't need to get out of your car, it will be safe. So again, May 31st from one to three. Another announcement is graduation Sunday will be June 7th, but because of social distancing, we will not be able to honor our graduates after service. But we want our high school seniors, Ella Miller, Michael Redding, and Maya Wilkins to know that they are loved and prayed for by their church family and we need your support. First Wayne Street United Methodist Church Youth Ministry is creating yard signs that can be sponsored by groups. Consider reaching out to members of your Sunday school classes or those you typically sit next to because we would love to fill each yard with signs and messages of support and prayer. Each sign will cost $10 and there will be an opportunity to share a personal message. The deadline to order is May 25th. For information or to sponsor signs, contact Kimberly Truesdale. It is my hope and prayer this morning that as you watch this service, you will feel connected to God, connected to other Christians, and that you will be inspired as we share this time together. And now for our call to worship, which is Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all these days, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At his sacred tent, I will sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice when I call, Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says of you, seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me. God, my Savior. Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Teach me your way, Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. Do not turn me over to the desires of my foes, for false witnesses rise up against me, spouting malicious accusations. I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord.
Our morning prayer this morning comes from John Piper, and it's called A Prayer About Coronavirus. Let's pray together. At our best moments, by your grace, we are not sleeping in Gethsemane. We are awake and listening to your son's prayer. He knows deep down that he must suffer, but in his perfect humanity, he cries out, if it is possible, let this cup pass. In the same way, we sense deep down that this pandemic is appointed in your wisdom for good and necessary purposes. We too must suffer. Your son was innocent. We are not. Yet with him in our less than perfect humanity, we too cry out, if it is possible, let this cup pass. Do quickly, O Lord, the painful, just, and merciful work you have resolved to do. Do not linger in judgment. Do not delay your compassion. Remember the poor, O Lord, according to your mercy. Do not forget the cry of the afflicted. Grant recovery. Grant a cure. Deliver us, your poor, helpless creatures, from these sorrows, we pray. But do not waste our misery and grief, O Lord. Purify your people from preoccupation with barren materialism and countless Christless entertainment. Put our mouths out of taste with the bait of Satan. Cut from us the roots and remnant of pride and hate and unjust ways. Grant us capacities of outrage at our own belittling of your glory. Open the eyes of our hearts to see and savor the beauty of Christ. Incline our hearts to your word, your son, and your way. Fill us with compassionate courage and make a name for yourself in the way your people serve. Stretch forth your hand in great awakening for the sake of this perishing world. Let the terrible words of revelation not be spoken over this generation, yet still they did not repent. As you have stricken bodies, strike now the slumbering souls. Forbid that they would remain asleep in the darkness of pride and unbelief. In your great mercy, say to these bones, live and bring the hearts and lives of millions into alignment with the infinite worth of Jesus as we now pray your words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Our scripture this morning comes from Luke 24, verses 44 through 53. Jesus, Jesus said to them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. When he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. Our message this morning is titled The Same because I have two incidences in the life of Jesus. First of all, the ascension, which is what the scripture was just from at the end of Jesus' earthly life, and also an image of the transfiguration. And I want to point out areas where those events are the same. I'd like to start with reviewing the scripture and talking a bit about each verse. So let's start with verse 44, when Jesus said to them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. In other words, it must all tie together. In these words, Jesus does not include the New Testament and what will be written about him, but he talks about the law of Moses, of prophecy, and also of Psalms, which would be wisdom literature, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Job, um, those books that come together to, to be wisdom literature. Henry G. Brinton points out that in the book of Luke, it starts in the temple with Zechariah. And Zechariah has a vision of the Messiah and he is struck dumb. He is unable to speak. And then, of course, at the end of Luke, there is praising in the temple, as we just heard in our verses, where the, where the disciples are praising in the temple. Temple is very important to the Jewish people, and they thought that you could only worship in the temple until 586 BC, when they were exiled to Babylon and their temple was completely destroyed. That event in history is, it was a turning point for the Jewish people, where they learned that they could worship anywhere. And like them, we have learned that as well in these last few months when we've not been able to be at church together and we have not been able to worship in our sanctuary as we normally would. We have learned that we can worship at home. We can worship other places. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 6.19 that our bodies are temples. We us, our bodies, are the mystical body of Christ. We are the church, the mystical body of Christ. Now that you've been away for several months, you understand the difference between praising at home on Sunday versus being at church. Another thing that Henry G. Brighton points out is that Luke opens with praise and thanksgiving. Angels bring great tidings of great joy. And at the end of Luke, it is in great joy that the disciples are praising. So we have the beginning in the temple in Luke and the end in the temple. We have great tidings of great joy at the beginning and the disciples praising at the end of the book of Luke. Then our scriptures go on to say, then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. Have you ever been frustrated when you couldn't understand a verse that you've read or a biblical passage you wish you could understand better? Don't be frustrated. Jesus opens our minds and hearts to understand scripture. Certainly it's good to study scripture. Certainly it is good to pray that Jesus will open our minds. But if your mind is not open on command, do not get frustrated. Jesus will do that. He is faithful. 
And when it is time, he will open your mind as he opened the minds of the disciples. Then in verse 46, he told them, this is what is written, the Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. You are effective witnesses. You understand that the miracle starts in Bethlehem, moves to Jerusalem, and then moves out to all nations. He says, you are witnesses of these things. What things? These things. Actually, all of the New Testament is witness. You are witness. And also there is a famous painter, Raphael, that was a witness. You can see the image, the transfiguration. Notice that Jesus is so central to the image. Jesus must be central in our lives. This moment is meant for us to understand that Jesus is the unique Son of God not just a prophet, not just the Messiah, but the unique Son of God with whom God is well pleased. You will see that he is flanked by Moses and Elijah, Moses representing the law, Elijah representing the prophetic word, and Jesus in the middle representing good news and the unique Son of God. Clearly below Jesus are Peter, James, and John. They are portrayed as stunned, surprised, and completely bewildered by these events. Peter wants to build three tabernacles and stay in this glorious moment. He recognizes how important temple is, but they cannot stay. Now look to the left. There are the other nine disciples. They have tried to heal the boy on the right who is plagued by an evil spirit. You may remember the story, the disciples are unable to help him. In the image with the boy are mobs of people who need Jesus but do not know him. They reach skyward searching for what things? Those things that are the divinity of Christ, the truth of his words. When Christ returns below to the world, he heals the boy and the disciples want to know why they could not. And Jesus told them it was a lack of faith. This image portrays a hierarchy of faith. Certainly Jesus in the center is the pinnacle of our faith. Knowing the law and prophecy like Moses and Elijah is also a strong faith. But many times we are like the disciples and we try to do something and we cannot. Perhaps it is our lack of faith. Or we are like the boy who is plagued by an evil spirit. Or we are like the masses that don't know Jesus. Here we see a hierarchy of faith. Here we see Jesus being filled. Last week, Cheryl spoke about kenosis, how we empty ourselves to be filled by Christ. In this image, we see that Christ is being filled by God. So what is the same? Well, the similarities are each of these are one of five major milestones in Jesus' life. There's baptism, there's transfiguration, which is this image, then crucifixion, resurrection, and ascension, which is our scriptures this morning, all indicate a presence of the Holy Spirit. Both the transfiguration and the ascension are models of resurrection What else is the same? Both happen after a blessing. The transfiguration happens after Jesus blesses the hungry with fishes and loaves. Jesus blesses the disciple and then ascends into heaven. Both scenes use Exodus as a departure word. We know that word from the uh, Israelites leaving Egypt. They exited. Here there is an exodus off the ground for Jesus in transfiguration and also in ascension. Both indicate a physical change of Jesus. His face turns white as snow in the transfiguration and in the ascension he is bodily gone. And finally both have a cloud, a symbol of the presence of God. Last week, I was taking care of my four-year-old grandson who had his tonsils out, and he was particularly miserable. 
And I made a bed for him in his wagon outside, a pillow and a blanket. And I told him to lay there and look up at the sky and watch the clouds change. And I pulled him around some, and being outside seemed to make him feel better. I remembered that my mother had done that for me, and that I was outside once when I was sick, and that I could watch my siblings play and feel better looking at the clouds. Of course we feel better looking at the clouds. They are a symbol of the presence of God. Now verse 49. I am going to send you what my father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. When he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. We are promised many things, abundant life, God's presence and hope. We are promised to be his. We are sons and daughters of King Jesus. We have his power and we have the ability to bless others. But here he tells them to wait, stay in the city. He says, wait. From Psalm 27, we heard, wait on the Lord. Have you ever been told to wait? I remember one time I specifically was told to wait. I had been at the grocery buying groceries. And as I put them in the back of Jeff's SUV, I got in the truck and I looked around and I didn't see anyone and I got ready to back out and I had a sense of wait. And after a moment, I looked around again and I didn't see anyone and I wanted to back out, but I still had a strong sense of wait. Finally, I thought, I have got to go. Things will start to melt. And I looked around and at that moment, an eight-year-old boy stood up from behind my truck and held up his tennis shoes dangling by their shoestrings. And I rolled down my window and I said to his mother, I nearly hit him. And she says, I know. She said, I was telling him to get out of the way, but he wanted to tie his shoes. He had been knelt behind my SUV and I could not see him. I was very grateful that day that the Holy Spirit pushed me to wait. When the Holy Spirit tells us to wait, we should wait. When the Holy Spirit tells us to go, we should go. Let's continue to be in touch with God and to listen to those promptings. And our final verses. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they stayed continually at the temple praising God. Jesus has left in body but his spirit remains powerful as they stayed at the temple praising God. Isaiah 42, 6 tells us we are to be a light to the nations, in church and out. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness. I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and will make you to be a covenant for the people and a light for the Gentiles. Like Jesus, we are to heal, restore, and bring peace. May you do that this week and next. May you be called to mission. May you be called to be light. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hi, First Wayne Street. It's Lynn Gilmore from the Outreach Committee. And I'm here to remind you about the food drive that we're conducting for Wellspring Social Services Agency. As I mentioned last Sunday, Wellspring has canceled its summer camp program that you have typically supported. The cancellation is because of the pandemic. Wellspring's programs have changed a little bit in that they are responding to the critical and emergency needs of providing food for families in the inner city. So the outreach committee wanted to still support Wellspring in a significant way, so we decided that conducting a food drive would be the best way to ensure that Wellspring met its needs for overcoming food insecurity in this community. So we're asking you, the congregation, to bring non-perishable food items and perhaps cleaning supplies and paper products to the church parking lot on Sunday May 31st, between 1 and 3 p.m. That's the official food collection day. 
Now, some of you may not yet be going into the grocery store yourself, but want to support this food drive. And we welcome your financial contribution. You can make your check payable to First Wayne Street United Methodist Church and notate in the memo section that this contribution is for Wellspring. As I mentioned last week, Wellspring has seen an incredible increase in the need. Over 100% increase in foot traffic to their Broadway Street food pantry and their mobile food pantry has seen more than 500% increases in needs. So I hope that you can support this food drive. And again, we will see you on Sunday, May 31st in the church parking lot between 1 and 3 p.m. You can safely and easily drop off your contributions to the Wellspring volunteers who will be there to help. And if you haven't been downtown lately, or you haven't even seen the church lately, the church building anyway, maybe this will be just what you need to be reminded of what we have in our congregation and on the corner of Barr and Lafayette streets. We also will have in person, Pastor Cheryl. So I know you will want to see her. So thank you for what you do for the church. Thank you for what you will do for Wellspring. In the meantime, stay well and God bless. Again, as I said earlier, we, you should bring your gifts to church May 31st of non-perishable food and also get in touch with Kim Truesdale for signs for our graduates. We have so many things to be grateful for. God is so very generous to us. I pray that you will continue to be generous with your church and with each other. And so now I offer a prayer of thanksgiving. God of glory and majesty, we have seen your glory in Christ, for it shines in our lives through the faithful who have walked with us on this journey. In seeing Christ's glory in them, we have seen you. As we bring our gifts to you, remind us that the world will not see you and your glory unless they see it in each of us. Remind us as we move through each day that all around us are your children who are desperately searching for a glimpse of your holy presence and love. May they see it in us today and in this week. In the holy name of Christ our Savior, we pray. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. 
May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance and give you peace and strength and a heart for the Holy Spirit and an understanding of scriptures and an amazement in the glory of Christ today, tomorrow, and forevermore. Amen.